besties to another episode. For today, I have really exciting news. If you didn't get a chance to watch the video that I just posted, which was about being back, better than ever, in the very beginning, I showed you a clip of an audition I did where I felt really out of it because it was my first audition back. Turns out I booked it. <laughs> I just found out tonight. It was fun and basically I just applied the same simple five rules that I always apply and I figured I teach these in my classes. I tell these to my friends. I would love to tell you, bestie, five rules that I always do no matter what. I never approach a commercial audition without doing these five things. This is it. This is the video. Yay. Okay. First things first. I'm a realist. Hold on. Wait, the first thing that I do when I get an audition is I go to the website of this brand. For this booking that I had, I'm not going to tell you what brand it is because I want to make sure that I don't uh, break any rules. I will, of course, tell you after it's out, but for right now, I'm not going to tell you. But I'll tell you, Bessie, later, I promise. We'll, we'll loop back around to this. I go to the website. So go to the product website, find out how to say the name of the brand. This particular brand, I had no idea how to say the name. So I wanted to find out why is it called this and how do I say it? And then it all made sense. I go look at the colors. I go look at the mission statement. But the most important thing that you want to find when you go to the website is what problem do they solve? That's why they're hiring you for a commercial to teach the audience on how this problem is solved and how now your life is easy because such problem was solved. It's not because you're pretty, although you are. It's not because you're super fit, although of course you are. It's not all those things. It's you're there to show the audience you solved the problem. What problem is it that it's solving? Because the star of the commercial isn't you, the star of the commercial is the product. So you as the actor need to have that thought of, it's not about me, it's about the product. How can I really make this about the product? Find out what problem they solve. So in the audition I had, the problem being solved is uh, saving money. So the problem, spending too much money and inflation. The solution, this product, which allows you to save money. Great. So that's the first thing, find the mission statement, how to pronounce the brand. So mission statement, how to pronounce the brand and what problem they solve. Number two, the most important fun rule is before I do anything with my commercial, but after, of course, I read the breakdown carefully, I go research at least one year, ideally two years worth of commercials. I want to see all the commercials this brand has put out. If they have not shared anything yet because it's a brand new product, okay, great you don't have that information. But if it's a product like Pepsi or Coca-Cola or Publix or Walmart or Chick-fil-A, there are years upon years of commercials that already exist that you can go watch and understand what the vibe is. I don't have another word besides just what's the vibe. So go find two years worth. Where do you find them? YouTube is the easiest one. And when you go to their website, go to the bottom. Usually you're going to find all of their socials. You can find the YouTube icon, click there, and then it takes you to their channel. If you don't have that, just go to YouTube, plug in the name, find the commercials, and put the product name right commercial after. Also, iSpot TV is a wonderful website for you to use. I use this website all the time. I have no idea who controls this, but it's a lovely website and I love it. And depending on if you can like make a profile or not, it'll tell you how many times a commercial has aired. You can also tag yourself in iSpot TV. That's a video I should make soon, how to tag yourself in iSpot TV. So you, when you write your name on it, like if you put Roxy Rivera, all of my commercials will pop up there. I'll do a different video for that. Thanks, bestie. You're so sweet and thoughtful. Okay, so go to iSpot TV, watch two years worth of commercials. Step number three. Anytime I see these commercials, not only am I seeing the pacing, the vibes, the humor that they're using, I'm also going to look at the color palette for the clothing. Now, am I going to book a commercial because I happen to be wearing the color palette? No, but it makes it easier for the production team. It makes it easier for the director and for the marketing team that when they see your tape, if it's a good audition, they're like, oh my gosh, it's like she just embodies this. Like she just embodies this brand. I did a sell some blue commercial. And I remember when I got to set, the marketing director was like, you were the only girl that wore sell some blue color in her audition. And I said, it was the first thing I did. I noticed that everyone, I mean, Selsun Blue is a particular color. You know exactly what color I'm talking about. It's that royal blue, but not too dark. It's brighter. She said, you're the, you were the only actor to wear our brand color. Thank you. And I said, isn't this what everybody knows to do? And I guess it's not. So that's a tip for you, bestie. It's not always going to be the brand. Selsun Blue has the blue color and it just so happens that's what 
most people in their commercials wear, but it's not like that everywhere. If you look at Publix commercials, you would think, oh, Publix is green and white, so everyone's going to be wearing green and white. No, when you go look at Publix commercials, you'll notice most of them are going to be wearing that like very light heathered gray, a light baby blue, faded blue, a muted like coral color. I don't remember what it was for Pepsi, but if you go look for Pepsi, it's not blue, white, and red. It's a different color palette. So just go look at it and it just helps you already look like you're part of the brand. And if you can do that, I, I think of it like when you're wrapping up a product or like wrapping up a gift for somebody and you're putting like the cute bow, it's that. You're just presenting your audition with a cute bow on top of like, look at how much thought I put into this project. And like, I want to... I want to make it look as cute as possible. Tip number four. Commercials can be 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or some of them one minute. Usually you're going to tape spots that are going to be 30 seconds long that will be edited down to 15 seconds. That means that your audition, you should be within that 15 second to 30 second mark. It usually shouldn't be longer. If someone's asking you, hey, these are your lines, this is a spot, and especially at the very top of the commercial, if it says colon 15 or colon 30, that's that 15 second mark, 30 second mark, you already know there's no way your audition should be taking longer than that 15 second or 30 second because that's how long the spot is. And I have been on set, it has happened multiple occasions where I have the AD holding a timer and they're timing me as I go because they know we only have. 3.21 seconds for Roxy to say these two lines before it cuts to this person. It is quite strict and that's an easy mistake. If someone sends you an audition and then they don't give you lines, they give you actions. That's the easiest place to mess it up. And the actions, you know, you walk into the kitchen, you sit in the chair, you grab the fork and the knife and you take a bite of the food and you go, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I see a lot of people do that commercial and like you come in and you make it a whole like indie film and then before you know it, it's like 50 seconds. 50 seconds, honey, you barely had 15 or maximum 30. Your audition, especially if they want two takes, would be, you know, 15 seconds, 15 seconds in your slate or 30 seconds, 30 seconds in your slate. So your audition could be, you know, a minute and 10 seconds maximum because that's how long it would be. And the last one, tip number five, is prep your props. So for this audition that I booked, and I'll be flying to Denver this week, hopefully I do a little vlog thing, I knew I needed to be like one of those sampler girls at Costco. So I knew that was going to be my outfit. What I did was I went to Google and I double checked my memory. What do the girls at Costco or Publix wear when they're giving out samples? And the easiest thing that came to mind was a white button down, slightly open at the top, this one's too much cleavage, but I would, you know, the white uh, button, button up shirt and an apron. I have a Starbucks apron from my Starbucks barista days, but green was not the color of the brand. The color of the brand, which happened to also match the color palette of their commercials, was pink. Everything was pink and white, pink and white, pink and white. And I said, oh my gosh, I need a pink apron. So yes, that day I had a whole plan. I said, scratch everything. I need to find a pink apron and Amazon couldn't ship it on time because I needed to tape that night. Well, I went to Target, Dollar Tree, Ross, Publix, Dollar General, didn't find anything. Finally went online to Target and I said, there has to be a pink apron at Target, come on. And there was, it just had different colors. So I went to Target and I bought this apron that had a little bit of pink and it was bright and it was cheerful and it kind of matches the brand. Though the brand doesn't have flowers or all these things, it only has pink. I figured, well, if I wear my white top with this apron, it matches the vibe. To be quite honest, I was planning on returning it because I don't really cook. So I was like, I don't need an apron. I might just return it and fold it carefully. But after I did it, I said, one, I should probably have an apron for a prop always. And two, I might need it for the callback. And then now that I booked it, I was like, I'm just keeping this. This is now like a happy memory. But that's an option. If you're like, Roxy, I'm short on cash, you can buy things, gently use them and then return them if you really need to. Is it ideal? No. Do you have to make it work sometimes? You gotta make it work sometimes. But you know, save it for the callback in case you need it. So I had this and I also went to Ross. This was like $10. And I bought something that I said, ooh, I could use this later. It's a golden tray because I want to be the sampler girl. I printed out a name of the brand. I was gonna show you, but I don't wanna reveal the brand yet. I printed it on Word doc. I went on Google, found the brand, put it on a Google doc and I folded the paper and I put it here. So as a sampler girl, I could hold my samples and I could have the brand here and I was in line with the brand. So I prepped the props. After I finished the audition, Though I did not think I was going to book this because like you saw from the other video, I was not feeling it. I was like just coming back. I was still a little bit, a little, a little bit of pain. I was like, I'm going to save everything. So I put my little apron folded together with that tray. And I said, if I get the call back, I'm ready. Prep your props. You need everything. The exact outfit with the exact hair, with the exact makeup, everything exactly for the callback. 
And the callback sometimes will be super long, sometimes will be super short. In my case, it lasted maximum three minutes. I showed up, said it twice. They said, thank you, Roxy. And I said, thank you, guys. And I left. But make sure you have everything. You do not want to show up with a different outfit or anything different for a callback. So those are the five Roxy tips I have for every single commercial audition. And I hope, I hope, I hope it helps you too. Love you, bestie. Bye.